Lynn, the first question has to do with the issue of U.S. policy toward Afghanistan. Uh, and the, the question is, says, Mr. LaRouche, as you know, during the presidential campaign, uh, Mr. Obama talked about taking U.S. troops out of Iraq and moving them into Afghanistan. Uh, yesterday, Defense Secretary Gates indicated that he has put several options on the president's desk regarding Afghani policy and expects the president to make some decision during the course of the next few days. You have identified that it is necessary to make a commitment to drug eradication as a central feature of any Afghanistan policy. I think you're aware of the fact that both General, Generals Jones and Craddock have indicated that they agree, with General Jones in particular emphasizing that while U.S. troops would be used to attack both the drug lords and drug laboratories, that what is needed is something much more than a military solution. Could you please define your policy and what you see as necessary beyond a simple military solution? The problem we face here is a problem of our conflict with the British Empire. Now, to understand what I mean by that, you have to look back to what I said uh, when I was in India recently, in the uh, beginning of December, in which there was a terrorist attack on Mumbai, known to some people as Bombay. Now, this terrorist attack was of an unusual character in the sense that it represented a new terrorist international organization whose headquarters is inside London, inside Britain. Right? But the wor worst part of this is the way it's structured. It, it can, it's a movable terrorist organization. What was done with the help of certain forces in Saudi Arabia in order to do what was done in New York in September of 2001 was a one-shot operation. It was done with British-controlled, Saudi-related terrorist organizations, which are typified by bin Laden, who is a Saudi agent who is a terrorist. Yeah? And the Saudi terrorism is key. But the Saudis financed this stuff and, and supported this kind of thing since the Afghanistan war against the Soviet Union. But before this was limited earlier, it's also tied with Al Yamana and other organizations of that type. It's tied with the BAE, the British BAE, who is also integrated to this. Now, what has happened now is that the Central Intelligence Agency, a representative of it, have correctly identified the same thing that I identified with my intelligence investigation at the time of the Mumbai incident and tracing it. The operation is centered, the command is centered in Britain, it's centered in England, and it's also centered in the protection of the, of the Church of England. Huh? Now, what the CIA has done, has made an announcement which has caused an international freakout, which has recognized that the British are using this capability against the United States. That's the targeting. And the British had a freak out about this being exposed and demanded that they get all the secrets of the United States, everything the United States knew on this question. Obviously, to try to cover their rear end, which obviously was probably even covered by somebody else in some other way, knowing the British. So this is the conflict. Now, you have another side of the thing going to Afghanistan. And all of this operation, all of this terrorism, is closely interrelated with the international drug traffic. Remember that when, when opium is produced in Afghanistan, particularly in the part of Afghanistan which is occupied presently by British forces, when the opium is produced there, it, 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 and then it's shipped into Europe, its value increases by, from hundreds of dollars to over millions. 
from over $600,000, $600 for a farmer in Afghanistan, uh, the crop, and the same crop when it gets through various transit points into in Europe or into the United States is six million. Uh, the key figure in this operation is a British agent called George Soros. Uh, and this, this thing is, is great, it's enormous. This is the greatest threat to the security of the United States on the border of Mexico, is George Soros' backing of drug operations. This is the greatest threat to the countries of South America, is the drug operations supported out of the Caribbean by George Soros. And George Soros is a British agent. So we have to look at this thing as this kind of situation. We have a problem in which the drug traffic is a key strategic factor. Not the drug growing. It is not the farmers in Pakistan who grow the opium that are the threat. Um, so even opium elimination by force is not exactly what you want to do. Because if you attack the farmer with troops, the farmer's going to join the terrorists and shoot back. So you don't want an engagement, you don't want any engagement you can avoid with the people inside, Pakistan, inside Afghanistan. What you want to catch is stop the movement of the opium from Afghanistan into Europe. So you want to eliminate the drug traffic, as you want to eliminate the drug traffic in the Western Hemisphere, the drug traffic throughout this entire region. That's your objective. Because if you get in there to fight against insurgency, where's the insurgency come from? The insurgency comes from the drug traffic. If you try to eliminate the drug traffic in Afghanistan by forceful methods, you're not going to succeed. You have to eliminate the drug trafficking out of Afghanistan. And you have, to, you have to take governments such as the British government and the Saudi government, which are key in this operation of international drug trafficking. Remember, drug trafficking has been a British imperial specialty since the 1790s. Remember in the 1790s, you had the New England pigs, um, who were British agents, were engaged, were engaged in tra it's the slave traffic, the, the African slave traffic. They discovered that it was more profitable to have the slave traffic run by the Spaniards, which has been run, was run through the entire 19th century. The Spanish ran the slave trade um, with British backing and British protection. The British said they weren't running slaves anymore. They weren't. But they were running the Spaniards who were running the slaves. Huh? But at this point in the 1790s, the New England bankers, the friends of uh, the, our financial establishment today, went from the, drug, from the slave trade to the drug trade. The, the, the United States pigs went largely with the Turkish opium trade. The British took over the monopoly on the opium trade from, from India into China. The objective was to destroy China. Hmm? So the British have been in that operation of running and controlling the international drug trafficking hmm? and much of the drug production, but the drug trafficking from that time to the present day. And everybody knew this, who knew anything. And it's still true today. So therefore we have a problem here, is that if you try to cooperate with the British in this operation, well, what are you doing? You're working with the enemy. The British are the enemy, as the CIA report has indicated. And I've read the report as delivered publicly, and it's the same report that I drafted from India on the basis of the Mumbai terrorist operation. I was in the India on a different, for a different mission for a couple of weeks. But the facts were laid on the table. Here we were, my Indian friends, were, including military and so forth, were all upset about this thing. So I was involved with my friends and with some consultation back here on investigating the Mumbai operation. And we tracked the Mumbai operation to the Church of England and to Muslim terrorists 
created and directed by Saudi Arabia in, in, in England. It's not the Muslims in, India, in England that are the problem. Most of the Muslims in India and in England are normal people, and normal law-abiding and, and respectable people. But you have a few of them who are real agents. And these agents are run by the British Crown well, as terrorists with the cooperation of Saudi Arabia. And this is what was used to create this Mumbai terrorism, and that can happen in other places right now. So how do we approach this problem strategically? Well, if you go to a, des a sandbox kind of analysis, of you're crazy. You say you've got a, a military sandbox assessment of, of how, what do you do with this operation. You don't want any troops in Afghanistan. You may want to protect the, the, the capital city, though I wouldn't trust Kozai. He can turn around at any time he wants to. But you don't want any troops in there in confrontation with the Afghani people. Because the, the farmer who grows the drugs is not normally a killer. You don't want to shoot farmers. What you want to do is get the drug traffickers, the ones who trick the drugs out. And you want to get at the money cash of the drug trade. And you want cooperation with nations which will cooperate, which will not include Britain. Britain will not cooperate. You want Britain outside. In this operation, the British are the enemy, as the CIA report indicates. Hmm? So therefore, our policy on the Afghan situation is different than what the president thought when he was only the president nominee and, and, and elect. He didn't understand the situation then. Now, the situation is different than he understood it. There's no point in putting U.S. troops into Afghanistan. And I think many of the generals who are competent in this thing will agree by instinct we have been putting too many troops too often in too many places to get killed. And then when they get injured, we don't give any hospitalization. We shut down Walter Reed virtually. We don't give any protection to the victims of warfare that we send into warfare. So we've had a little bit too much warfare going on. And instead of using our guns, sometimes we should use our brains instead. What we want is an international crackdown on everybody who's pushing drug trafficking across borders. This means a crackdown on George Soros, who is the world's biggest drug trafficker. Shut him down and shut and think about shutting down anybody in the United States politically who's associated with George Soros. And we have a list of those organizations which are recommended for attention on that ground. We, what we have to do essentially is look at this thing as a global strategic problem not as an Afghanistan or a regional problem there. It's a global problem which has been essentially in existence since the British got into the drug trade back in the 1790s. And we have times we've recognized the British are our enemy on this account alone. We've been on the verge of war with the British over the drug traffic repeatedly. The British are not our friend. The British Empire is our enemy, and our most important enemy. And anybody who is competent in intelligence knows that. Anybody who understands the interests of the United States and their defense of those interests understands that. The British are our enemy. Not the British people, but the British Empire, what it represents. And therefore, we have to understand our interests have to be served. And our interests are served by alliances with countries which are not the British who are willing to cooperate with us in dealing with this problem. You know? you know, Pakistan is about to be shattered. You want to send troops into, into Afghanistan? What's going to be the effect on Pakistan? It's ready to blow up and disintegrate. You want that? Do you want this thing spreading backfire into India? Come on, let's grow up. Let's stop playing games. Let's realize we're in global warfare against the British Empire. That's not the British people, it's the British Empire. It's the Anglo-Dutch interests, including the relevant Saudi interests, which are our enemy. The same enemy, in part, that gave us 9-11. And if you don't understand 9-11 is a threat to the United States, 
What do you understand? So therefore, our policy should not be a military operation in Afghanistan, unless there's for special purposes, not a general, general purpose warfare of any kind. We want to disengage from that mess. We want to rebuild our military capabilities, which we have destroyed with this prolonged Iraq adventure. We want to align things and make sure we have the right allies this time. And our ally on this question is not, is not the British Empire. The British Empire is our enemy. And as you have this, this fight, as reported through the Daily Telegraph, between the United States Intelligence Services and the British Intelligence Services on precisely this issue. On this issue, the British are our enemy. That doesn't mean we're going to go to war with them. But it means we're going to recognize they're not reliable. They're not trustworthy people. They're on the, wrong, on the opposite side. And we don't have to kill everybody who's, not, who's on the opposite side. We just have to figure out how we're going to handle the situation. So the point is, I don't, we should not have any emphasis on an Afghanistan operation. We should have a, a regional strategic approach to the region and get off these fetishes about these little wars here and there. The Iraq war is too fresh in our memory. We don't want anything more even that resembles that. We don't generally want warfare. You, you're more likely to win wars when you have few of them. And the fewer the better. So we don't want that. And what we have to do is clear the heads of our politicians in Washington of this idea of single issue ideas, such as warfare in Afghanistan. We are going to have to do something about Afghanistan. We're going to have to do it in cooperation with what? With China, with India, with Pakistan to, uh, and other countries. We're going to have to cooperate with nations of Asia, which are in the line of trafficking, of drug trafficking from Afghanistan into Europe, uh, where $600 worth of a crop, a, a farmer's crop, becomes $6 million worth of opium or opium derivatives in Europe, and a similar thing in the United States. We have the same thing across, we, we're out to lose Mexico. Mexico is about to become a non-existing state, a failed state, because of this drug problem. We have to do something about that. We have to have an international anti-drug campaign. It means an anti-George Soros campaign. And we have to make clear that George Soros is not welcome in our country.